years ago. <laughs> that was in. That was in the very first issue of Sniffing Glue. <laughs> that man wrote that. I struck up a friendship with Caroline, and she said, "Oh, you've got to see the Sex Pistols," which I'd heard about, obviously I'd read a little bit about, but I'd never seen them. And she took me a couple of weeks after. It was August 1976. I went to one of the Andrew Club shows. Right. Again, long hair, the lot, and I was just like, wow. And I remember I actually got my brown satin jacket ripped up in the audience. <laughs> 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 there wasn't many of us, but it was still a bit of a scrum down front. I've never done that at a gig before. I've never, you know, I was one of these people who wanted to sit down at gigs. Because before that, you used to sit cross legged at gigs. <laughs> and when you went to see your Avon Dolls and your Pato's and all that, I'd be like, get that much sit cross. But suddenly I'm out of the scrum, is in there, my, my arms ripped off my brown satin jacket. So it was like, it was sort of like, Wow, I'm a punk now. And I, within a couple of days, I'd shorn my hair off. The wolves used to do these cheap clippers. Don't do it yourself, clippers. And I mean, my mum was like, What are you doing in the bathroom? I'm like, oh, nothing. <laughs> So I come out and what have you done to your hair? Like, I've gone from like, literally, not quite overnight, but within a few days, you become like a punk. You know? and it, was, it was exciting. It was just like someone's come along and told oh, a bunch of tosses. There was something engaging about that. It wasn't was it like John, this. as I asked Alan earlier, was it John that, that came from? Or was it yeah, he was the more? attitude hanging off the mic. He always had a great, he was the face when he was always hanging off the mic. Steve was giving it some and talking. You know, it was straight early on. They were different. They were, it was that different because even like the feel goods I mean the feel goods are exciting about the feel goods I mean I saw them at the Hammersmith Odeon we were on the seats a lot you know I mean it was like but they were still saying oh thank you for that the next day <laughs> 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 people were you didn't have any of that there was no pistols gigs there wasn't any it wasn't entertainment it was like a happening there's a brilliant thing that you, you talk about about how the light the lack of light in the rock scene influences your photography and the pump look. Yeah, the, the audience and the band, there wasn't much separation between them actually. They were on the stage, or Poe going on the stage, or there was almost no space between them. There's a lot of pictures I've got, for example, of Shane McGowan on the front row with a clash, because he was Poe going there. Or there's a picture there of um, Ari Up in front of the, at that, at that gig at Generation X. Yes. But these all take with flash, you know, sort of bang, 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 bang. And then afterwards, later, when you look at them, you'd see who was in the picture. The other thing about the flash gun is that you could just shoot it and make a getaway sort of thing. <laughs> and, they were blinded. Uh, yeah, they were blinded. <laughs> that's, that's why I felt as if they were like frozen animals in the headlights of a car. Yeah. And those pictures from Punk are, are like that. We've got uh, one of the undertones here, we've got Damien here. Yeah. So what was, where, where did you, in Northern Ireland, where, uh, in Derry, how did that happen that the undertones came out of that? Um, I was listening to John Peel, really. Listening to John Peel. Yeah, yeah. No. We totally identify with the whole punk DIY ethos, <laughs> and anybody can be on stage. Yeah. And you know, we didn't uh, like you know, we didn't dress up either. No. Like the way <laughs> punks did in London. Yeah. That was that wasn't the punk was for us. It was yeah. the attitude. The rule book was was ripped up. Yeah. You had bands that literally just started playing a couple months before. They were sort of putting records out. Like it had to be short songs, lyrics that meant something about my life. You know, about yeah. London. You know, so. My favourite songs were White Riot, you know, London's Burning, you know, 1977. They were songs that were about stuff, about stuff I could relate to, you know. I say fast, you know, short songs, it's just with attitude, you know what I mean? You didn't want them to get a keyboard player in. Mean. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, you know. I mean, when I did the first uh, Sniffing Glue fanzine, I was working as a bank clerk at William, Glynn, William and Glynn's Bank. Within a year, I was like, Ed editing like probably the best rock magazine in the UK, <laughs> bar none, right? I was a a record label, plus I had my own band within a year. <laughs> it could only happen in punk. There's, there's, no way, there's no way you're going to make Dark Side of the Moon working in a band. But punk, you, you can make that happen. You know, punk should go out there, the terraces, the houses in the States, it should free people. These people, they have these mundane lives. It should free them. <laughs> But we decided that it's better to to go He was a pervert, dictator of war A few nights of party, we were up on the floor Cause these, they are the good, the good, the good times These old people tell me They are the good, the goody, goody, good times